So in our final uh, series of videos on the hybridization of atomic orbitals, uh, we're going to look at sulfur hexafluoride and phosphorus pentachloride uh, to see how we can also use d orbitals in forming hybrid orbitals. So first of all, let's have a look at SF6. Now you may remember SF6 uh, has a uh, octahedral arrangement of its bonds, um, so all those bonds are at 90 degrees to each other. So we need to think about uh, what orbitals does sulfur have available to form six bonds. So sulfur in its ground state has a uh, outer configuration of 3s2, 3p4. So the 3s and uh, let's say the 3px uh, orbitals are filled and we have uh, one electron in the 3py and one in the 3pz. So that would suggest that uh, sulfur can only form two bonds. Uh, however, the d orbitals are of uh, relatively low energy, quite similar uh, to the uh, 3p, and therefore uh, sulfur can actually use those as well. So before we do that, let's have a look at how those uh, bonds are arranged, uh, because obviously where the bonds are are where sulfur needs to form its uh, hybrid orbitals. And you can see that they are along the axes there. So we have uh, two hybrid orbitals along the x-axis, um, uh, which are going to be uh, based here and here. We will have two hybrid orbitals along the z-axis, and we will have two along the y-axis uh, so that it can form its six bonds with the fluorines, which are uh, the uh, white spheres. So we're looking at uh, d uh, orbitals that uh, have their lobes along the axes. Uh, we know that the px, uh, the py and the pz have lobes along the axes. Um, so we're looking for the d's that are going to have the same. Now the d orbitals have uh, four lobes each, um, and so are slightly more complicated than the p orbitals. But the dxy, the dyz, and the dxz, which are on the left hand side uh, along here, uh, they all have their lobes in between the axes, and hopefully you can see that there. However, the dz squared has its lobes along the x axes, and the dx squared minus y squared has its lobes along the x and the y axes like so and therefore it would make sense for us to choose those two uh, to form our hybrid orbitals with our uh, p and s orbitals and therefore a sulfur can promote two electrons uh, into the d uh, subshell and uh, we therefore have the electronic configuration of excited sulfur ready to bond 3s1 3p3 3d2. And the result of the um, hybridization uh, is uh, those lobes of hybrid orbitals that you can see there. Um, they're different colours only to uh, indicate uh, a little bit uh, clearer the 3d nature of the diagram um, and also the fact that uh, I've just put different coloured lobes along the axes. So again uh, hopefully you can see that uh, we have got the um, two lobes, so we have one orbital here, one here, um, for along the uh, z. We have uh, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So we have six hybrid orbitals that will each contain one electron each. Um, and of course, uh, these become uh, bonding orbitals, uh, more of which you'll hear about later on, um, once fluorine comes along and bonds with those like so. Um, but we won't, we won't worry about what uh, fluorine's up to. Um, our main concern here was how could sulfur form six bonds um, using those orbitals. And of course those are called sp3d2 hybrid orbitals. And because we uh, started with six atomic orbitals to form them, we have uh, resulted with six hybrid orbitals. So now let's look at uh, phosphorus uh, pentachloride or phosphorus 5 uh, chloride um, and you can see that its arrangement is uh, of the uh, bonds around the phosphorus is we have a trigonal planar arrangement 
um, with uh, these three uh, here. So these would be uh, in the uh, XY plane. And then you have your two uh, bonds in the Z uh, plane. Uh, so we need to think about, again, uh, the initial electronic configuration of phosphorus and how it can rearrange those electrons to form the hybrid orbitals with that configuration. So phosphorus starts uh, as 3s2, 3p3, uh, but of course um, if it wants to form five bonds it's going to need to promote uh, its 3s electron into an orbital. Uh, the choice it has is which one to go for. Uh, now, uh, you may remember that if we took our, our 3px, our 3py and our 3s, um, we would uh, form uh, sp2 hybrid orbitals and they would give us the trigonal planar arrangement um, that uh, we see in BF3, for example. Um, so those would account for those, those uh, orbital arrangement and then we need to find two in the Z direction um, so it would make sense to use the 3Z, 3DZ and we obviously still have the P3PZ to use uh, to give us two uh, uh, hybrid orbitals in the Z direction. So this is a diagram just to show how those uh, bonds are arranged around the axes. Um, to just give you a clear indication of uh, why we have chosen to use the dz squared. So we promote that electron into the 3dz squared uh, orbital, um, which is uh, this one here. Um, and uh, we have now have an excited electronic uh, phosphorus uh, electronic configuration of 3s1, 3p3, 3d1 and it's time to make our hybrid orbitals. And so we end up with our, uh, uh, effectively, our sp2 uh, hybrid uh, arrangement here, here and here um, in our trigonal planar. And then when we also contribute our uh, pz and our dz squared, we can also obtain our two hybrid orbitals there. Now these are all the same energy hybrid orbitals, there's no difference just because they're a different colour. It's merely trying to show the uh, geometry around the central phosphorus atom um, and show how these can be arranged to then bond with chlorine atoms uh, when uh, uh, they, they come along here. So we would obviously have chlorine atoms here which would bond with the, each of the electrons which are held in uh, these uh, now hybrid sp3d orbitals um, and uh, ju just because we, we've spoken about the sp2 hybrid uh, orbitals that's just really to try and show you how, how we can work out the structure um, they are all uh, the blue and the red they are all sp3d hybrid orbitals uh, so that concludes our venture into our uh, hybrid orbitals uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, that series um, just to give you a bit of extension material above A level, um, uh, particularly if you're interested in doing chemistry uh, for degree or taking chemistry on uh, further in your studies. Um, there's a lot more to bond in, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, so hopefully you will uh, you know, have the interest to, to investigate that further.